Now we come to the Gospel, which is John 15, 1 to 8, where our Lord describes Himself as the true vine. When we say true, when John says true, like I'm the true vine, uh, in texts like that, I'm the true light, he means not contrasted to false, but to incomplete. Because Israel, as I'm going to read you some text, Israel is called the vine. As I'll read some text, and you can see. But I'm the true vine. I am the true Israel. And now all the world is called to be part of uh, the Israelite dignity. That comes from the prayer after the reading from Exodus at the Paschal Vigil, where we say, let everyone share the Israelitica dignitas, huh? the Israelite dignity. Be God's people. Be loved by God. Know Him. Call on Him. Trust Him. That's what baptism is all about. So, the text says, I am the true vine, Jesus says, and my Father is the vine grower. Now you see, Paul uses another image. He says, we're the body of Christ. But it's the same reality. The source of all our life is Jesus Christ. And that life is eternal. So I am the, you know, you are my body, he says through Paul, or I'm the vine and you're the branches. Now, if you're connected with me, you're alive. If you're not connected with me, you're not alive. But if you are, you see, alive, well then my father will trim you. First, he'll take away every branch in me that does not bear fruit. Give me a chance, God. Don't, don't judge me today. Like, you know, don't let me die today. I want to get, you know, I want to die and have you see Jesus in me. That lovely song we sing about, for me I will press on, running the race and so forth. Uh, the line in there where it says something like, and the Father will get up and uh, welcome me. Give me a hug. Well, that's what Therese said, remember? She said, when I die, God is going to give, God the Father is going to give me a big hug and say, now it's my turn. And that turn is eternal. And so, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. But you say, boy, he's a fanatic. Of course he is. He's agape. He's love. What he wants for for us is that we be joined to him so intimately forever that our very life, our very existence is the life of the Trinity. That's what he wants for us. So the more we get pruned, the quicker that happens to us. And so, uh, so, it goes on then, you are already pruned because of the word I spoke to you. Now that's very important. Huh? If we take, even now, as we're doing this text together, if you take this word inside of you, you'll be purified. It's not just Father Francis given this discourse. This is the word of God. And if you take it in, it'll purify you. You see? You are already pure pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me. This is a precious word. Uh, i got to find it for you. Minate. Um, Menin. Abide. Um, remain, they translate, which is okay. Abide is a little bit broader. To abide in the Lord means to be in him, actively receiving from him. You see, remain in me and I remain in you. And in the first letter it talks about the word remaining. How does that happen, this abiding? 
it's a work of the Holy Spirit. The Word comes into us and the Holy Spirit makes it fruitful. How? Because you see, if we re- remaining in the Word is not just plop, like I remain in my apartment. You know, here I am. No, it means it's a very interior dynamic activity by which I keep remaining, absorbing, opening myself up, receiving the Word, receiving the Logos. Huh? Uh, expressed in Scripture, in the Eucharist, and in His own words to us when He talks to us. And He wants to do that. And so, you see, it's this abiding. And if, you see, if I abide in you like that, see, then uh, you'll be fine. You'll produce fruit. And you will grow in this abiding. You see? In the first letter of John, this is a very important teaching. Abide. Abide. In the Word that by the work of the Holy Spirit is living and active and moving in you. Take it in. Absorb it. Yield to it. And it'll change you. Now, first thing that happens is what? You see the sin that's an obstacle. Don't worry. You know, look at Jesus and say, forgive me. If it's a serious sin, go to the sacrament he gave us for that very reason. And be reconciled and have Jesus abiding in you. And if you keep it up, you try to pray every day, you will know what this text that we just read said. You see? Uh, In this we know that uh, He abides in us because He gave us of His Spirit. Remember we just read that? Uh, In this we know that He abides in us because the Spirit bears testimony to our spirit that we are children of God. That we pray and we have the divine affection for God the Father. And it reverberates within us and we are seconding it. We are agreeing to it. That's what it means to abide. It isn't just plop. You know, we agree. But we agree with this thrilling movement back to the Father whereby our heart gets to be like Jesus. We love the Father. And this is the work of the Holy Spirit. And the medium for most of this is the Word of God. Read it. I don't care if you like it or not. Read it. I don't get anything out of it. Read it. You will. Go to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't understand this stuff. This fellow's telling me i got to read it every day. You know? What am I supposed to do? He's going to say, read it. I'll help you. Maybe not the first day. Maybe it's two or three times, but don't quit. And I promise you that my Holy Spirit will bring that alive for you. And the first time it happens, you will be so thrilled. My God, God talked to me. Of course he did. He loves you. When somebody's on retreat, they call it a directed retreat, I pray ahead of time. And I say, I think the Lord wants you to read a letter to the Ephesians. You can read anything you want, but read that every day. And after a couple of days, they're so excited. I heard him talk to me. I understand what that means now. I experience the truth of it. They get all excited. And they should. But that changes your life. Do you know God? Yeah, I know God. Well, we're supposed to. Does that make us all mystics? No, we've got a long way to go. But it does help. And it gives us confidence, and it cuts down the, uh, quo- the quotient of sin. We quit sinning. Why? Because there's a connection, right? As we come to know the Lord, what do we say to Him? Lord, I will trade you any sin I've got if I can just know you better. You say, okay, what about that one? Whoop. Okay, here, take it. I don't want to sin that way anymore. That's how He wins us over. By desire. You see? And that's the role of the Word in us to create that desire. So we say, Lord, I'll trade you any sin I've got if I can just know you better. And he'll take us up on that, both parts of it. Show us where we have to renounce sin 
and give us a deeper knowledge of himself. So, when you're walking down the street and somebody says, Brother, sister, are you saved? You say, you bet I am. But stay out here preaching, brother. You're doing a great job. Somebody should be out there. We should have 20,000 Catholics out there. How they make fools of themselves. Of course. Didn't Paul say that's fine? To look like a fool? I'd rather look like a fool preaching Jesus than look like a fool doing some other stuff. Okay. So, just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. That's all I've been talking about, right? I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains abides in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Because without me you can do nothing. Wouldn't you like to come to the end of your life and have people thank you for bringing them to the Lord? You don't have to be a professional to do that. I had a great-grandfather who died at 105. He was a postman. And he'd be tired at 65, whatever time postmen have to retire. And he walked every day two miles to church and then two miles back after Mass. And one day at 105 and something, he walked in the door and he said, Today the Lord is going to call me. And he walked upstairs and lay down and died. Now that's the way to go. You can imagine how many times he had yielded to the Lord. You know, was getting mad at his wife and stopped. You know, who knows, was hurt. A fellow employee, employee kept him back from a promotion. You don't know. But he kept his fidelity to the Lord. So he knew just when he was going to die, and he went upstairs and lay down and died. 105. All his purgatory was over. He went straight up to see the Lord, I'm sure. So, uh, but anybody who doesn't remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. So watch it. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. I'm warning you. Don't let that happen to you. I'm telling you now because I love you. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. Now, that's pretty good, right? Uh, and you will bear much fruit, and you will be my disciples. Now, that's pretty good. Wouldn't you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you see? Uh, and um, then it goes on, you see, uh, and anything we ask we'll get so that you can bear much fruit and be my disciples, you see. Isn't that wonderful? Wouldn't you come like to come, get old, and look back on your life and say, Phew. all the wrong ways I could have taken and you stopped me, I am so glad I listened to you. I'm so glad I let you change my life. When I was supposed to forgive somebody, I did. With your help, of course. My God, I don't have that on my mind now. Stick with the Lord and you'll be happy. And so, as he says, I'm the vine, you're the branches, you see. All the life comes from me. Just stick with me. Now, St. Thomas, if I can find these quotes again quickly for you, there are some beautiful, oops, wrong book. Well, I didn't bring St. Oh, yes, I did. Um, I don't have a long time to do this, but I want to read some of them. I am the true vine. He is using true in the second sense to distinguish himself from the deformed or spoiled vine, which, the, which is the Jewish people, because they didn't accept him. This was because you brought forth wild grapes. This is the text from Isaiah 5, right? And then the vine dresser cultivates the vine, now, to cultivate something is to devote one's interest to it. This is Aquinas now. And we can cultivate something in two ways. Either make what is cultivated better, as we cultivate it, a field or something of that sort, or to make ourselves better by cultivating, you know, and in this way we cultivate wisdom. God cultivates us to make us better by his work. Since he roots out the evil seeds in our heart, you see, it's not that discouraging. He's doing this work. We just let him. Like St. Bernard says, to consent is to be saved. 
As Augustine says, he opens up our hearts with the plow of his words, plants the seeds of his commandment, and harvests the fruit of devotion. Amen.